Good afternoon, students. So in this video, we are going to talk about how we calculate what is known as the measures of central tendency. And I want to apologize for the videos in this particular unit. The audio quality might not be as good because I forgot my microphone at school. So I'm just recording on the computer audio. So it might not be as clear. So I apologize about that. So the MMMR stands for the mean, the median, the mode, and the range, which are all known as the measures of central tendency. So if you're being asked, you know, which of the following is not a measure of central tendency, um, if it is not one of these four measurements, then it is not classified as one of kind of the big four measures of central tendency. So the way that we're going to understand how to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, and the range is by actually just doing an example throughout the page. So um, I'm going to list a series of numbers here that we are going to use. So the numbers are going to be three. Three, four, three, three, two, six, five, seven, and two. So the first step when you're doing anything with data, the, an amazing first step, like always would recommend this step is to put the numbers in ascending order. So that could either mean greatest to least or least to greatest. I typically do least to greatest just because it's easier for me, but you could do greatest to least as long as they're in that ascending order. So if I was to put these numbers in ascending order, it would be uh, two, two, three. I have three threes, so I'm gonna put that three times. Uh, four, five, six, and seven. And one way I can double check is by counting. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now that I've put the numbers in ascending order, let's talk about how we cal calculate the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. We're gonna start off with probably the most tedious uh, measure, and it's the mean. It's not hard to calculate, it's just more steps than all of the other ones. So the mean is what's known as the average. So a very common place you see the mean of a set of data is your grades. Your grades are an average of all of your different assignment grades. Um, another way you could see it is, you know, if you are into sports, someone's batting average, that is a mean of all of the successful and unsuccessful attempts they've had um, while they've been at bat. There's all these different um, ways and places where the average comes into play. So the way that we calculate the mean or the average is we add all of the values. So add all values. Um, and then the second step is uh, to divide by um, the amount in the set. So add all values and divide by the amount in the set. So um, what the amount in the set means, it means how many numbers are in your list or how many numbers are in your data set. So um, for us, if I write all the numbers, so I'm going to add two, two three plus three plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven. Depending on the numbers in your data set, your teacher may allow you to use a calculator just because it's a lot of tedious math. You know, adding up a lot of numbers um, can take a lot of time. For this, we're just going to add it by hand. So if I was to add all these numbers, I just kind of like to group. So two plus two is four. Three plus uh, three plus another three, that's nine. Four plus five is nine. Six plus seven is 13. And then, then if I was to add all of those numbers up, this is all equivalent to 35. So some people like stop here and forget that you have to divide, but to find your final answer, you have to divide by the amount of numbers in your set. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values in our set. So 35 divided by nine is going to get us our average. And 35 divided by nine is about 3.8. It's technically 3.8 uh, repeating. Um, but if we were to round it, most of the time with averages, we round them to like the 10th or to the hundredths place. So we're gonna say that's equivalent to 3.8. So the average of this set is going to be 3.8. So um, if this was like the amount of, rain in inches that fell in the state of Texas, if this was, you know, all the rain averages for, um, you know, the month of, let's say, August or something, the average rainfall for that month was 3.8 inches when you take into account all of the different um, amount that it rained. So that is the average. Another measurement, the second M in MMMR is the median. 
So that is the value that splits the data into the upper and the lower half. So if I have my numbers, I'm gonna list them all again. So two, two, three threes, four, five, six, and seven. I am trying to find the number uh, that splits the data into kind of my higher values and my lower values. So one quick way to do this is to use the cancel out method. I don't know if that's a great name for it. That's just the way that I call it. So what I what that means is I just cancel out a number from the front. I cancel out a number from the back and I keep kind of alternating and doing this process uh, until I end up with the value that is in the middle. Sometimes though, you'll end up with more than one value in the middle. We'll talk about that. Um, but in this case, the median is going to be three. Um, so it's similar. The median and the mean should always be similar to each other. Sometimes they're the same, but they shouldn't be too far off um, from each other unless the data is very, very skewed, which we'll talk about that later in the unit as well. But for the most part, they should be very similar to each other. So the median of this data set is three. However, um, if you have an even amount, so if even amount in set. Um, so let's say for instance, um, I there wasn't one number in the middle, maybe like three and four were the two numbers in the middle. Um, what you do there is you just find the average of those numbers. So like, let's say for instance, um, if three and four were in the middle, I would find the average, so three plus four, and then there's since there's two numbers in that set divided by two, that's equal to seven over two, which is 3.5. So this would be the example if there was an even amount in the set. You just find the average of the two that are in the middle. So that's always a good thing to kind of check too when you're first looking at your data is, is there an even or odd amount? Because if you're asked to find the median, that determines if you can just use the cancel out method till you find the one in the middle, or if you need to, uh, find the two that are in the middle, and then just find the average of that. It is really, really important that you make sure all of your numbers are in ascending order. Because if you just try to find the median with the numbers and they're not in ascending order, like if it was to try to find the median just from up here, my median, if I just did it up here, was two, which is not the case based on the math that we just did down here. So it's really, really important that your numbers are in order before, before you find the median. Okay, the last two measures are actually very, very simple. Um, they're the least tedious, easiest amount of them all. So the mode is really just looking at which number shows up the most. There could be multiple modes if there's like a tie. In our case, the, the number that repeats the most is three because it shows up three times. So the mode is not how many times the number shows up, the mode is the number that repeats the most. And again, there could be multiple modes. So if there's like two twos and two threes, then your mode would be two and three because they both show up the most amount of times, okay? So um, the, the mode is the number that repeats the most. It is the uh, data value, not frequency. So that's just a reminder. It's the number that shows up the most, not how many times the number shows up. Okay, the last thing is the range. So the range is just the difference between the biggest and smallest in the set, figuring out what kind of range of numbers is represented with this. So for our example, the largest number is seven and the smallest number is two. So the range of the data is going to be five. If this is talking about, again, the amount of rainfall, um, the range is five inches. So from the day with the most rain to the day with the least amount of rain, you know, the range is five inches of rain. Sometimes Texas weather's crazy, right? And the temperature, the range can be crazy. Like when I asked my um, Amazon device the other day, what's the weather going to be like? She told me that the high was like 86 and the low was 53. So that's like a huge range. It's like over 30 degrees in temperature. So um, this is how we calculate those measures of central tendency, our mean, our median, our mode, and our range. For your practice uh, question today, I'm just going to give you a set of data. And I want you to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. So your set of data is the numbers 2.5, 4, 4, 8, 3, 1, and 9.5. Yes, you can have decimals. So 
everything applies kind of the same as before. Um, when you find the average, you're going to add them together. When you find your median, you know, if you have to find the average between two numbers or if it's a number that's in the middle, you can do that. But um, if you want to check your answers uh, after you calculate the mean, the median, the modem range, you may check the table of contents. If you're a little confused, maybe watch this video again or check in with your teacher or someone in your class who you think may be able to explain it to you. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye.